Our first scripture is Luke chapter 8, verses 22 to 25. One day Jesus got into a boat with his disciples, and he said to them, Let us go across to the other side of the lake. So they put out, and while they were sailing, he fell asleep. A windstorm swept down on the lake, and the boat was filling with water, and they were in danger. They went to him and woke him up, shouting, Master, Master, we are perishing. And he woke up and rebuked the wind and the raging waves. They ceased, and there was a calm. He said to them, Where is your faith? They were afraid and amazed. And they said to one another, Who then is this that he commands even the winds and the water? And they obey him. So just a couple of observations before we go to the time of prayer. Um, here we see, obviously, the power of Jesus over the natural world. We also see that the natural world can be dangerous and unpredictable. It was a real danger, the windstorm was real, the boat was filling with water. Notice the disciples are not reckless, no one tries to swim, <laughs> but they're afraid. And they wonder why Jesus is sleeping, apparently unconcerned. Notice when he awakes, he rebukes the wind and the waves, but he doesn't rebuke them. He doesn't rebuke them. He asks them, where is your faith? And I take that to be a very compassionate tone, a very caring tone. Where is your faith? Where is our faith today? Where is it directed? In the midst of this COVID-19 crisis and danger in the natural world, right? Jesus invites us to have faith in him. So just take a moment to let your imagination, maybe you can close your eyes if that helps, just to place you in the boat with Jesus. Imagine yourself there and the world around is raging, there is legitimate danger and you're there in the boat with the other disciples, and he wakes up. What will you say to him? Just take a moment in silence to speak to Jesus. Our second scripture is taken from Psalm 135. Praise the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. Give praise, O servants of the Lord, you who stand in the house of the Lord, in the courts of the house of our God. Praise the Lord, for the Lord is good. Sing to his name, for he is gracious. For I know that the Lord is great. Our Lord is above all gods. Whatever the Lord pleases, he does in heaven and on earth. Whatever the Lord pleases, he does in heaven and on earth. Your name, O Lord, endures forever. Your renown, O Lord, throughout all ages. For the Lord will vindicate his people. The Lord will have compassion on his servants. The idols of the nations are silver and gold, the work of human hands. They have mouths, but they do not speak. 
They have eyes, but they do not see. They have ears, but they do not hear, and there is no breath in their mouths. Those who make them and all who trust them shall become like them. But you that fear the Lord, bless the Lord. Praise the Lord. In this time of danger, uh, of threat around us, uh, in times of anxiety, one of the things that's possible is we can, can identify our idols more clearly. The false gods that try to lure us away from God and things that don't satisfy us, things that are impermanent, things that are God-like but not the true and living God. One writer has said that the times of anxiety expose our idolatries. The golden calf that's outside of view suddenly comes into view in a time of stress and difficulty. Notice the psalmist reminds us that the false gods present themselves like they're helpful. There's a kind of human-like presentation, right? They have eyes, they have ears, they have hands, they have mouths, but they don't hear you. They don't talk to you. They're not going to help you. But they present themselves like they can. So this is a call also for us to refine our faith, to purify our faith, to deepen our faith in the one true God. So this is deeper work. And again, I invite you to a time of silent prayer where you might confess to God what you've been relying on and turn your hearts to him. I'm going to lead into the time of silence by just reading a few of the verses again. The idols of the nations are silver and gold, the work of human hands. They have mouths, but they do not speak. They have eyes, but they do not see. They have ears, but they do not hear. There is no breath in their mouths. Those who make them and all who trust them shall become like them. But the Lord will vindicate his people and have compassion on his servants. So take a moment to respond to God in silence. In our final two short passages, one is taken from Romans 5, 1 to 5. Therefore, since we are justified by faith, we have peace with God through Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have obtained access into this grace in which we now stand, and we boast in our hope of sharing the glory of God. And not only that, but we also boast in our sufferings, knowing that suffering produces endurance, Endurance produces character. Character produces hope. And hope does not disappoint us because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit that has been given to us. And then from 1 Peter 3, 15. In your hearts, revere Christ as Lord. Always be prepared to give an answer to everyone who asks you to give the reason for the hope that you have. And do this with gentleness and respect. This is a powerful passage of assurance, isn't it? How we are positionally in Christ. We have grace. The Spirit is with us. 
and that God continues to cultivate character in us through suffering, through this difficult time, and that we can actually have this thing called hope. Hope does not disappoint us. And it's actually the word hope is similar in both Romans and 1 Peter. We don't need to be ashamed of being hopeful, Paul says. Peter says that we should be ready to explain our hope to people who might be curious. And I wanted to throw that in because this week reminded me of 19 years ago. I was at Altador Baptist Church when 9-11 happened on a Tuesday morning. And that Sunday, the church was full. And people came who were seeking. They were seeking answers, people who were not believers. And so I say that because we shouldn't be surprised. We should be ready if in our lives, people begin to ask questions around what we believe and where we get our hope from, and that we should be ready to give them our reason in a gentle and respectful way. And of course, today, to renew our own hope in God. So thanks be to God for these scriptures. And as we go to our final time of prayer together, um, I'm going to share some prayer items here that have been coming up. But I also want to invite for a moment or two after I share these, if anyone has any to share, I'm going to add them to the list. And we can all hear them. But here are some that I suggest to you as we close. First, for people who are presently suffering, the effects of COVID-19, both in Canada and around the world, those who are impacted by this. Also people who are vulnerable, particularly vulnerable, the elderly, people who are physically compromised, uh, poor people, those without access to adequate health care in our world. Also, all of the caregivers and healthcare providers who are challenged at this time and strained at this time. And we have a number of them in our own congregation. And finally, those in authority in our world who have to make decisions that impact people. Let's keep them in our prayers as well. So those are some of my suggestions. Does anyone else have any that they want to suggest? Any prayer requests? Just stand up and speak it out so that we're aware. Okay. Just have a time of prayer together again, just for a couple of moments in silence, and then I'm going to close us. And please lift any of these needs and others that you have on your heart to God. Lord, thank you for the amazing truth in your word today. Thank you that we can be people of hope, even in the midst of our own frailty and all of the unpredictabilities. Thank you that you are with us, that spiritually we are safe in Christ. And Lord, deepen our faith. Continue to shape us into the character of Jesus in our lives. We pray for all of those people and situations that we just mentioned. We lift them up to you, Lord. We pray for our church. Many are away today. We pray that you would keep us united, that we would love one another through the various means of communication. Lord, be with our elders, be with our deacons and those in leadership, our pastoral team here at the church. 
Help us to be wise in our decision making and to lift one another up. We pray too for other churches around our world. What an opportunity this is to share our hope. Lord, help us to do that. Lord, for all the other needs that were presented to you from the hearts of everyone here right now, we pray that you would hear, that you would come and meet with us, Lord, that you would answer our prayers, that you would strengthen us. And now, Lord, as we continue and close our worship, we pray that you would be with us, that you would encourage us. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen.